Good morning, everyone. Our project focuses on analyzing and filtering food items in restaurant reviews, and we used sentiment analysis and web scraping. We worked with Dr. Sun of Cal Poly Pomona to create Discovery, a mobile application that allows users to discover the best tasting, most popular foods in nearby restaurants. And I'm Caroline Kwan, one of the developers of Discovery, and I am a junior in high school at Westridge in California. Hi, uh, hi I'm Nina Luo. I'm also one of the developers of Discovery, and I attend the web schools and I'm a junior. So why did we uh, decide to make Discovery? Well, there's a number of reasons, and one of those reasons is relevance. So let's begin by looking at some of like the rapidly growing culture of online review systems. So here are some uh, digital marketing statistics in 2019. And um, basically, in 2019, 90% of guests check out oh, a restaurant. Oh, I think I'm going for it. About that, ninety percent of guests check out a restaurant online before dining, and one third of people read other people's guests before selecting a place to eat. And eighty-four of eighty-four percent of customers trust online reviews as much as they trust personal recommendations. So what this tells us is that digital marketing is becoming increasingly more influential to attracting customers to restaurants. And also customer opinions and reviews online have also become influential and even decisive of consumer behavior. So one statistic that's not included in this slide, uh, which is also worth mentioning, is that a one star increase on Yelp can boost a restaurant's profits up to 9%. So clearly digital marketing and review based sites have real impacts on customer choices. And so look at uh, here are some of the most successful platforms operating using consumer reviews. So we have Yelp, uh, Amazon, TripAdvisor, and um, they're influential in basically virtually any, uh, all spheres of activity. So that includes restaurants to hotels, to home services, to products and travel to name a few. So then one of the reasons why we made this uh, discovery is because we realized that online consumer review platforms are becoming more and more relevant and essential to daily life. Another reason why we wanted to create discovery is because when we went to go eat at restaurants after school, we looked at the menu, but we struggled to find the best tasting dishes, um, all the words, like they were very small or they had like the same design. So we weren't really sure which had like the best tasting, most popular foods. And when we went onto Yelp to look at the reviews, some of the reviews were lengthy and resembled a rant. So we wanted to find a way to quickly um, discover the most popular and highly rated food dishes. And we created Discovery, a mobile application that collects reviews by web scraping on the Yelp website, which we will go into more detail later on. And it also uses sentiment analysis to rate the food items in the Yelp reviews and shows the most positively rated food dishes. Okay, so here's a demo of how our app works. I should probably share the Discovery is a powerful tool to help you in your daily decision making and activities. In the main It's kind of hard to hear the volume. You as well as their distance, how many reviews they have gotten, and an image from the restaurant. Next, click into one of the restaurants and you will be able to view a list of its most popular dishes based on sentiment analysis ranking of the dish from scraped Yelp reviews. Additionally, you can search up restaurant names using the search button at the bottom. On the side of each dish is a sentiment rating. Numbers closest to one are the most recommended. 
Discover your new favorite dishes with Discovery. Discover. All right, so now we're going to go on to the methods and uh, how the app works. So this is an overview of the Discovery app. And so we have a front end here and a back end. The front end is written in Flutter, which is uh, a user interactive software um, development package that can be used to write iOS and Android apps. So the language that Flutter uses is Dart. So that's what we use to code our front end. Um, the front end includes three pages, which is the home page, the search page, and the about page. And now let's go on to the back end. The back end uh, includes um, Beautiful Soup, the Google Natural Language API, and the blacklist that we made. So we'll go into detail about each of those elements later and the challenges we faced with each of them in the next slides. But basically, um, in this slide, you can see that when the user searches for a restaurant name using the search function or clicks onto a restaurant using the list function, this calls the back end. And this is the web scraping. Um, which is used, uh, we used beautiful soup. And um, basically this calls the database. And then all those words are put into the natural language processor, uh, which assigns a sentiment value to each word from a scale of negative one to one. And then this essentially means how negative or positive a word is. So negative one would be the most negative and the positive one would be the most positive. And then a higher score is desired uh, because that means that the customer who wrote the review liked the dish a lot. So then all of the most popular, uh, the positive words are put through a blacklist to filter out the non-relevant words. So this will be explained in the later slides. And then after the signing values and the filtering, all of the data is put into the JSON file and returned back to the user. One of the challenges we faced was gathering the Yelp reviews so we initially used Yelp Fusion API, but it provided too little information for the machine learning algorithms. And in this example, um, the text that was returned to us through the Fusion API is, this is one of my favorite restaurants. The food here is so different in a good way. They serve good quality food. My favorite things to get here are, and then the food items are omitted from the review so we cannot analyze the food sentiment and we had to find a different way. This is because Yelp Fusion limits the amount of data um, we could use to um, an average of 160 characters for each review, which is not enough. Um, so we had to um, use another method. Okay, and another challenge we had was analyzing positive and negative comments. So one of the disadvantages we found uh, in customer review based sites is that the five star uh, rating system is often flawed and it doesn't give us a clear understanding of the reviewers opinions. And so another better way to rank products is to focus on the sentiment um, of the review. So how negative or positive someone sounds when they're describing the product. So to implement this, we used um, Google's Sentiment Analysis API. So the solution to the two challenges above was to use Beautiful Soup. And most of our backend was coded in Python. And we used this Python request library, um, Beautiful Soup, to extract the Yelp reviews through HTML tags um, from the Yelp website, and then that grouped the reviews into a list. And then we used the Google Natri Natural Language API to rate the food items from a score of negative one to positive one. And the negative one is the least, neg is the most negative reviews, and the positive one is the most positive reviews. And in this image above, here's an example of a um, analyzed food item, the strawberry hibiscus juice. And we would use the sentiment magnitude and also the sentiment score, um, which is 0.2. Okay, and so the sentiment analysis API 
is able to assign sentiment values, but it's actually pretty ineffective in figuring out which words are actual uh, dishes and which words are slang or unrelated words. And so, for example, um, the API might assign a high value to a word such as chair or table um, or waiter, and the program will um, put those uh, irrelevant words in the highest uh, recommended dishes. And that's not good because they're not actual dishes. So our solution was to create a blacklist. And the blacklist is a dictionary of words that filters out unrelated food words. Right now, it has over 4,000 um, 4, words. But the downfall is that we have to manually um, find words to add onto the blacklist. And this is very time consuming. So we might want to improve the um, machine learning algorithms so that it automatically filters out the food items instead of us manually having to sort them out. Okay, and so for our database, before we used Beautiful Soup to scrape the Yelp reviews directly off of the site, we used Yelp Fusion API, um, as Caroline talked about earlier. And so there were many problems using uh, Yelp Fusion API. So for instance, they only provided three reviews for each restaurant, and often all three reviews would be incomplete. So this was very inaccurate, and there would not be a lot of dishes mentioned in the three sentences that Fusion provided. So after switching to the beautiful soup method, uh, we gained a much larger database, so it was much more accurate. And so we compared the two and their effectiveness using this graph. Another experiment we did was testing the reliability of the blacklist. So we collected samples from 50 different restaurants in five locations. Um, and then we um, wrote the without blacklist column, which is the average amount of words the beautiful soup collected from the Yelp reviews for a restaurant. And this is without the blacklist. And then in the blacklist column, we um, filtered out all the unrelated words and averaged the amount of food words that were collected in the restaurant reviews. And the difference column shows the how many words the blacklist filtered out. And in these five cities, um, they filtered the blacklist filtered around 50% of the words. Um, so it proves that this is an effective method for getting rid of unrelated food items. All right, so we also have a website and you can view our full paper on the website. If you wanna learn more about it, you can also go to the website. So there's also a link to download it on the Google Play. However, it's not yet available on the App Store and that will be part of future work. Oh, and so here we have future works. And in the future, we uh, plan to improve the food sorting method as well as create maybe like a web-based version of discovery um, and also probably implement a new machine learning algorithm that learns to identify food items. So that will be eliminating um, the blacklist and so that would improve accuracy. And I think that's it.